Hello everyone, Vera here, and welcome to Dearest Models, where I'll be looking at previous model projects in detail. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the show. Jennings was an idea that came about a few years ago. This was during the start of my fascination with the Midsodor, and I was looking for a relatively easy engine to make, and I eventually decided on that mysterious red engine that looked like Renaeus in the Audrey stock box. Early on I decided on the name Jennings, I'd basically seen it floating around a lot and I thought it was very fitting for the engine. And on that same note, it was pretty unanimous that a Bachman Renaeus would be used as the base for the model. Once I'd gotten that out of the way, my main dilemma was then how to make her more than just a Renaeus recolor. So I tested out some different modifications like different buffers, different cabs and such on a 3D mock-up before eventually settling on a Captain Baxter Townsend hook sort of look. The next hurdle was actually getting her made in 009 and this was done by commissioning the help of Tom, probably better known as STL or TTL. All I had to do was send him a Beckman Renaissance and he got right to work. I'll hand you over to Tom to take you through her construction. Hello all, I am Tom uh, and I will be walking you through the process I went through to build Jennings. So Jennings started as a, as a stock Bachman Renaeus, and the first thing I did was uh, remove the funnel. It was gone, uh, and replaced it with one from the Nero Planet Dog Occupation Kit, of which I had a spare one of that I had parted out from my own Renaeus. The old funnel was cut off and the base grinded down with a rotary saw, and the new hole made for the brass replacement. Next done was the uh, the cab. I took the stop cab, cut off the back tank, and cut off the rest of the rear of the rear cab sheet. The back tank was built up because it's hollow. It's not even, it's not there on the Bachman model. Only the sides are. So I built the back tank. I cut off the rest of the rear of the cab sheet. Two slots were then cut in the front of the cab, uh, two size, as you can again probably see in the pictures. And these were then filled in using styrene to get to the correct size as per the 3D model, which in turn is based off the classic open Fletcher Jennings cab. Two, uh, two pieces of styrene were then cut, filed down, and then cut again to create a incredibly narrow piece that were then glued side by side in two different places on the front of the cab, and then extra thin wire used to create the support poles as seen on some of the surviving narrow gauge Fletcher Jennings, and on the 3D model of course. Around this time, I had also started working on the running board and buffer beam. Uh, the buffer beams were extended downward to match the 3D model, uh, and the buffers removed, as well as the coupling hook mount that's molded onto the running board. Once these were sanded down smooth, uh, I used a spare etched buffer beam piece from the Dog Occupation Kit from Narrow Planet, and glued that to the model and filled in the hole for the coupling hook. The model went through a few layers of primer for, to make sure everything was smooth and there were no big gaps or imperfections. Uh, the running board was painted uh, after a final coat of primer uh, and it was pretty much ready to go. Uh, I probably didn't mention this before, but the buffer, the dumb buffers used were reused from a Hornby bug. Finding paint for the body took a little while to find, <laughs> find a color that was uh, close enough uh, in terms of the red, but we eventually were able to find a I believe Rust-Oleum uh, Apple Red that would suit our purposes. The model's cylinders and wheels uh, were then removed from the chassis and I would ultimately brush on the primer and the red coat that was needed. The main shell itself was painted in three different parts, the main cab, the back tank, and the body shell. Uh, once these, this was all completed, I started uh, hand brushing the lining on using the black paint. As one can guess, this was a fairly tedious process of masking, taking off the masking tape, touching up, etc, etc, throughout the entire model where there is bordering. Once the bordering was completed, uh, lining started. Uh, 0.35mm transfers from Fox transfers were utilized to do the lining. Throughout the model, uh, I often had to cut the corner pieces even to even smaller corners to match the 3D model's livery. The border lining was a fairly tedious process. Uh, I had to lay two strips of white 
side by side on both boiler bands, wait for them to dry, and then take an equal length strip of black, lay them on top of those two whites, and hope they didn't move in order to get the correct white-black-white -white lining as seen on the 3D model. Once the lining was finally applied, I did some light paint, uh, paint touch-ups to the model, including painting up the pipework brass once again, before ultimately it was, uh, everything was sealed in with a coat of Tamiya semi-gloss. With this done, I then started the final paint uh, touching up process, which included painting up the wheel rims and the wheel centers, as well as painting the molded cab handrails on the bunker and the uh, end of the body shell for the cab. About this point, I also finally glued in the cab poles to bring the top of the cab and the back tank into one whole piece. From here, the model began to come together one last time. The stock handrail for the boiler was reused and repainted into a nickel silver. Uh, the, bo the whistle was repainted with brass paint. I also added the cast brass components from the dogification kit. They were painted and done up, and I added hand wheels to the top of the injector valves. Fortunately, I kind of forgot to add the coal rails. Fortunately, I was able to find uh, two etches from other dogification kits I had used for previous commissions. These were cut off. To finish everything off, I uh, scratch built two sandboxes, painted and lined them. Before ultimately, I also custom painted up the box. Nothing special, I just used some blue paint to paint over the Renee's names and took a little bit of paper that I had printed out earlier, put Jennings on it, put that on with blue tech. Nothing special. But before I sent it off, I also added some cab detail from some leftover parts I had from models I had previously broken up, including safety valves from an old packet, uh, a regulator handle, and a brake handle. These were then added to the cab of the model, right before being sent off. And of course, I couldn't help but taking a picture of it next to my own Railway Series Reneus and the stock body shell that was acquired for a commission that would be following this one. Right, so that should wrap up a bridge version of the general process that was used to create Jennings, and I'll leave you with that. Cheers for that, Tom. Jennings arrived home soon after, complete with a wonderful face pack commissioned from Butterfly Coffee. However, there was one small problem when she arrived. She was in pieces. As for me, I was also in pieces, on the floor. Thankfully though, all her parts were still in the box, so I was able to put her back together again. There were some gaps in the lining as a result of her journey, and I fixed these using some underlines from a sheet of alphabet transfers. I just had to trim them down a little bit, and they fit quite nicely. Next up came some real coal some 3D printed bar type couplings to represent the mid sodal type of coupling, some lamps, LNER buffer beam numbers, mid sodal crests, and LMS capside numbers. And then finally some crew figures from Hardy's Hobbies, and after that it is just a case of waiting until name and builder's plates arrive from a narrow planet. She stayed like this for a short while before being sent away to Mary Hampton Productions with another low coat for weathering. However, I was dismayed to find that she had uh, not survived the trip unscathed. Thankfully though, her own was able to fix her back up and weather her before sending her back to me. Upon arrival, I was pleased to find that she had in fact survived the journey, third time lucky I dare say. And that was Jennings basically done, and she is honestly one of my favourite models at the moment. And I can't help but being somewhat satisfied that the red engine in the stock box did actually turn out to be called Jennings. Before I go, I have a final closing anecdote for you. So I work in IT support, fun fact, and the way the office is set out is you sit in circular pods of eight and the center of these pods is raised up and has a circular lid to it which is just the right size for a circle of backman easy track and my first christmas there i suggested the idea of having a christmas train on the top and basically it became a tradition every year since this Christmas just gone, we had a narrow gauge set up inside of the Batman loop, and so of course I brought Jennings in. But unfortunately, halfway through the day, she failed. 
the motion brackets on her left hand side had come loose and she basically looked like she was imitating Percy's wonky cylinder that he had in the early series. Thankfully this was an easy fix and she's been very well behaved since. My parting gift to you is this meme from Luke. That's about it for this video guys, thank you very much for giving it a watch and also a big thank you to Tom for collaborating with me on this one. If you want you can find Tom and myself on Twitter, the links will be in the description below and I'll see you next time, bye!